Okay, I want to talk about random number generation within JavaScript. Now, I'm talking about pseudo-random number generation. This isn't random numbers that would be something if you wanted to do security. Uh, these are insecure. There is a pattern because it's based off of the timestamp, but for most purposes, when you're doing web development, you want to randomly show something on the screen. This works just fine. So I have here a page where I've got a couple of arrays. I'm going to do some examples of generating random numbers and then generating some random CSS class names, some random people names, things like that. All right, the basic formula is this right here. Math.random is the built-in JavaScript function for picking a random number, and that will give you a value between 0 and 1. And I've drawn out this little number line here to give an example of what I mean. So everything from 0 up to 0 0.999999999, that is the range that you get from math.random. If you want to generate a random number between 0 and some other value, you multiply math.random times that number. So between 0 and 3 would give you something from 0 up to 2.999999999. So you get the idea. It's up to but not including that top number. Whatever you're multiplying this by, you're not going to quite reach that number. So if you want to reach a range that is, say, for example, a number between 1 and 3, first you need to just decide if you want it to be inclusive. Most of the time you will. So I want a number 1, 2, or 3. And I just want an integer. How do we get that? Well, math.random times the range. So this is your highest number. Subtract the lowest number. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Add 1 to that. And all of this falls inside of math.floor. Math.floor will round it down to the closest integer. If I started off with the range of 2 plus 1, so math.random times 3, I'm going to be getting a number from this, math.random times 3, which will start at 0 and go up to 2.999. Math.floor rounds it down, and it will give me the closest integer, either 2 or 1 or 0. Math.floor truncates all this possible values here. So I end up with 2, 1, or 0. Then, after you've rounded it down to an integer, add the smallest number. I said it, I wanted something between 1 and 3. 1 is my minimum. Whatever this is, I'm adding 1 to it, whether it's 0, 1, or 2. If it's 0, my final answer is 1. If it's 1, my answer becomes 2. If it's 2, my answer becomes 3. So I will have, by adding on the minimum, I will have slid this up to here. And it's one of these three values. And that's what this example right here is going to do. Math.floor time, uh, and inside that, math.random times 2 plus 1, which is my 3. And then I'm adding 1 after I've done the math.floor, and then I'm going to log that out. So we'll clear this out, run this once, I get 2. Run it again, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2. And I can do this again and again. I'm never going to get a value that is not 1, 2, or 3, because there's my range, plus 1, and then 1 added outside of the floor. Now, if I said between 1 and 3, but not including 3, I could leave off this. It would just be the range, 3 minus 1. Random number between 500 and 1,000. All right. Num math dot floor math.random times. Now I'm going to say I want it to be inclusive. I want to include the 1000. So my max minus my min is 500. 1000 minus 500 is 500. I'm going to add 1 to that to make sure that I get the 1000 as a possibility. And then we add our minimum number, which is 500. We are clear. We'll run this again. 624 
Oh, 500. 830, 637, 788, and so on. So I will get numbers from 500 is my smallest, and 1,000 would be the largest that I would get from this. Now, if we're working from an array, well, it's really just the number of elements inside this. I want to get something that is 0, 1, or 2 to be able to target the appropriate thing in the array. Here, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, random person. Let's do this array right here. So our max number is going to be 3. The min number is going to be 0. 0 is the smallest index. 3 is the largest index, which is also take your array, get its length, subtract 1, which is 4 minus 1, so 3. Length of the array minus 1 is always what your max is going to be for any array that you're working with. Your num, math.floor, math.random, times, and then in the brackets, I want to be inclusive because I want to make sure that I get the Jimmy Page in that list. I will take my range, max minus min, add the 1, and then after the floor, we add the 1 again, and then we're going to write out people sub num. So we got Jimmy Page. We got undefined. Okay, why did we get undefined here? Ah, of course, we put in min as zero, but then we wrote one here. We want the min to be added on, which is zero, so we could actually omit this here. The min is zero, we don't need it. But that's what happened here. We got a number that was not in the array. There we go, John Bonham, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones, Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, and there we are. So this is working fine now. Process for the random CSS class name is going to be the exact same thing as before. Our max is going to be, actually we have to use a different variable because we're using let. This will be classes.length minus one. Let the min is going to be zero again num will be math.floor math.random times the range plus 1. Well, 3 minus 0 is 3. Add 1, we get 4. So on my number line, I'm going to be going from 0 up to 3.99999. Then I'm doing math.floor, which brings it down to 3 as my max number. We add min. The min is 0. So I can say plus 0 or just leave it at that. And then we'll write out our classes array num from inside there. Oh, yes. I use the same variable name again. This could be, let's use our variables since we went to the trouble of creating it. Now again, I could leave off the min too because it is just zero. So highlight, active, sale, highlight. We're getting the random classes. And that's all that's involved. So math.random gives you a number between zero and 0 0.99999, almost to 1. So it's exclusive of 1. You multiply this by any number to expand this range. So if I said 3, I'd get up to, but not including 3. Then if you want to change the range, if you want to move it up the timeline and make it from 1 to 4, I would have to multiply this, and then I add on the minimum as my shift. I'm moving this up the timeline, or up the number line, rather. Okay, I hope that helps, and as always, thanks for watching.